some of the assignments require the use of a linked list. What I wanted you guys, what I wanted to do is present how to create your own linked list so that you can maybe integrate this code with, uh, with some of the other code examples that you see. We're going to use a console based app for this and I'm going to go ahead and create a new project and we'll just call this uh, junk code. Okay. So the first thing that you should realize is that a linked list consists of the actual list and nodes where one node contains two pieces of data. It contains the actual data and then a pointer to whatever the next node is going to be. So to do so, we're going to go ahead and create a list node. So let's create a new class and let's call this class list node. Alright, there we go. And so in my example, I'm gonna have I'm going to have two pieces of, of uh, two private variables. The first one is going to be an object which contains the data and the other element is going to contain an actual list node which is just the pointer to the next node. And so I'm going to have two constructors, one where data is passed with a link to the next node. And I'm going to instantiate these to the data that's passed. So my private data is there and my next node is there. There we are. And I'm going to have another one, another constructor, where I just have data, meaning there's just one, one node. So maybe this is like the first element or the first time it, it's ever created. And what this is going to do is it's going to inherit the first one. So it's going to call So basically, if I just pass one parameter, the only thing that it's going to do is it's going to call, oops, this is supposed to be list node. This is going to simply just call this, this one, where the, sec, where the node that's passed is just null. Okay, and now what I want to do is create properties to access these. And so public list node next. And all this is going to do is just get so it returns the next element and set, which sets the element. And there we go. And then another, another, another property which is just read only that returns the actual data. So I have here essentially just the node. And what does a node consist of? It consists of the data element and a pointer to the next node. And so now I can write my actual list, which will be which will build that link list. So I'm going to create a class and we'll call this list. And now I can write the code for it. And so this code requires a list node which is going to be my first node because a list will always have a first node and a last node and maybe a name to, to define what that is and then private list node my second node I'm sorry my last node and maybe the name of the list and so I'm going to have a constructor which just has a list name so basically, if somebody wants to instantiate it, it's just this. Instantiates it with an actual list name. And then the, my first and last node are both null. So this just uh, instantiates it to nothing. So I created a list without any elements. 
and I called it whatever it is that I passed to this. And then I can have a constructor, which is my default constructor, that calls the other constructor, and it, all it is is just list, meaning if I pass if I pass it, if I don't pass it anything, it's just going to call the list list and call the default one so it sets the first node and the last node equal to null. And that's it for this. So now what I can do is create the properties for these. To save time, I'm not going to actually create the properties. I had already created them. So I'll just copy and paste these. And if you look at previous code written, it's just a simple get. So list name returns the name of the list list first node returns the first one and last node returns the last one and they're all they're all read only okay and now we can write a couple of methods that allow us to interact with this well the first method that I want is well is the list empty so I can create a public function that's called is empty and all it's going to do is it's, it's going to return true or false based on if the list is empty or not. So if first node is null, then the list is obviously empty. So I'm going to return true. If it's not null, then it's obviously not empty, so I'm going to return false. And that's it for that method. Now I need ways of inserting data into this list and so I can create something called insert at front which takes a data object meaning I insert whatever this object is to the front of the list and so what I need to do is first find out if it's empty because if it's empty then it means that the first node and the last node and I'm sorry the first node and the last node is whatever that object that I'm inserting meaning that new node that I'm creating. So I'll ask if is empty and that's the function that we just created. So if this is true, then make the first node equal to the last node which equals to a new list node with that data that I just passed. It. And that's it. But if it's not empty, then what I want is the first node to equal a new list node so meaning create this new list node and provide it this uh, item that we sent and a pointer to the next node. Well, what would be the next node? The previous first node, whatever it was before. And so that's how I insert it at the front. Now I want another element that will insert it at the back. So I want public void insert at back object insert node and again I'm gonna check if it's empty so if it, if it is empty then basically my first it's the same as the first code my first my first node and my last node are exactly the same but if it's not, then I have to do something a little bit different. I have to say, well, my last node is going to equal my last node dot next, meaning whatever the last node was pointing to before, and that's equal to a new list node. And there we are. And so basically, what I'm saying is, look, my last node dot next is now no longer a last node. It's going to point to what my real last node is because I'm inserting at the back and this new last node is going to be a new list node with the data that I passed to this to this method. Okay, and now we can remove from the front and remove from the back. Those are two elements that I should also need to do. So I can do something called a public object. The reason that I want object is this is this is like the um, Microsoft's Word undo button. If I accidentally remove it, but I want to, uh, but I want to add it back, I should have access to the object 
and in memory, which is why I returned the object. So that's the only reason this is not void. It's optional though, I could have made a void. So if it's not a if it's empty, then obviously um, obviously there's no data. So I want to throw a new exception which is basically just saying, hey, throw an error, saying error, no data. Meaning, you can't remove anything if there's nothing to remove. Okay, and then what I want to do is create an object with the remove item, which is whatever it is that I'm going to remove, and since I'm removing at the front, it's going to be my first node. So it's going to be first node dot data. Okay, and so now I can start my checking if my first note is equal to the last note meaning there's only one element and it's the first and last note then make them both null so first equals last equals null this basically nullifies both elements because there's only one and therefore just make both null if it's not then I want my first note to equal to what my previous pointer was which is first note dot next meaning that's the pointer and then I want to return this item that was removed and there we are and that remove we can also remove from back and remove from back is going to be fairly similar in, 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 um, in what we do except that we're going to have to iterate a little bit iterate meaning we're going to have to move through the linked list and so in this case we'll do same thing, public object. Remove from back. And so if it's empty, then obviously it's an error. So let's throw an error. Throw new exception. And let's keep on let's keep a copy of that object that we're about to remove so object remove item since we're removing the last node then all I just need to do is last node dot data because that's that's the element that's going to keep my last uh, my last information and now I can do if first node is equal to last node meaning there's only one well I'm going to nullify both which I can say first node equals last node equals null same thing that we did before. Else, if if not, then I need to start iterating. So, the first thing that I want to do is create a list node, which is current, and make that equal to my first node. Because this is what I'm going to use to iterate through the entirety of the list. The list. And so while current.next meaning the pointer to the next node is not equal to my last node so while I have not reached the end then I want current equal to current.next and so what this will do is it'll, this will just move iterate through the, the, the length of a linked list until I get to the last node and then I can just say last node equals current because now I'm at the end and current.next is equal to null. So meaning no longer point to anything, I'm already at the last node. And once I do this, I can return the remove the removed item. And that'll do it. That'll be the entirety of my list. So now I can actually write a program to use this. And so if I pro write a program to use this, it can be as simple as the following. All right. Well, I want to create a list, a new list, a new linked list. And I'm going to call it my list. So that's the title, that's the name of my list. And then what I can do is I can do something like new list dot insert at front. New list, I'm sorry, new list node. my first item
and I can say something like list no list node like create a new node this is just different ways of doing this second node equals to new list node second item and instead of doing it, doing this all the way in, in one line of code I create a list node that's independent it isn't attached to anything but now I can attach it to this to my list so I can say insert at back second node and that insert that inserts the node at the back and so now I actually have a working list node if you look at the assignments uh, particular unit 4 and unit 5 there are assignments that require the use of a linked list well you can adapt this code so now you have the basis of creating a linked list and review the code that I've previously written and you can adapt the two to, to be able to complete the assignment as always if you have any questions or, or need any assistance feel free to call me at your convenience or email me or message me.